Poštovani gledatelji, dobar dan i dobro došli još jednu emisiju na Večerni TV. Ovdje imamo veliku čast danas razgovarati sa jednim od članova svjetski poznatog rock benda Queens of the Stone Age koji uskoro pripremaju, odnosno izdaju novi album. Michael Schumann je uvijek nas. Hvala, Mike, kako ste? Hvala, 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 kako ste? Ja, kako ste? Yeah. So please tell me that it's it's a uh, fine weather like always in California because it's uh, raining here for past five days. I bet it is. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful here. It's yeah, nice to hear that. So tell me, six years have passed since your last album. A lot has changed in the world. Uh, I believe that uh, these are also the motives of the songs on the new album, Times New Roman. Uh, yeah, I think um, we've all gone through it the last few years and um, I'm not I don't think this record's a response to that, but I think uh inherently um the topics are gonna you know relate to that um as you write songs based on your experiences and your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, I think uh in some ways it's a comment uh on our society and and uh especially in America, but in, and especially like in social media and, and just the way that um how divided and how much hate there is in the world and and uh that's not what we're about and um so i think there's a there's a bit of that for sure yeah and how much has the coronavirus virus pandemic affected your lives and the work in general how was it when you couldn't perform for like two years well luckily we were um we had finished our last touring cycle so we didn't have immediate plans um to be out on the road so we weren't deeply affected by it. we had a lot of friends bands that you know put out records mm -hmm. march 2020 mm -hmm. and basically they go away um which is i mean i can't imagine what that must have felt like for them so i guess fortunate enough for us uh once we were you know allowed to kind of be together and be in the studio we had that time to go make a record mm -hmm. um so i guess timing was a little bit on our side Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're, we we haven't been on the road yet, so we don't really know what the world is like in in the touring sense. So, uh, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, a few days ago, you presented the first single from the album, "Emotional Sickness." Uh, what are the other songs uh, on the album like? And like, and how different is the sound compared to the last album? Well, I think that you know these last like Clockwork and Villains, the last two records we put out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's the same, it's all of us, the same five of us playing on these records. And and I'm not saying it's a trilogy, it's not. But there is something that is cohesive about the last three records. And, um, you know, we always try to push ourselves creatively and, and lyrically and, uh, and um, do things that challenge us. So... I think it's going to sound different than any other Queen's record. Um, but, you know, it was self-produced. Mm -hmm. We didn't have That's anyone else yeah. there with us. Mm -hmm. So it was just us. And, and you kind of, you go in there and you, 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 you make what you like and you make the record that you would want to hear the most as a fan. And you just hope that, you know, people can relate to it and enjoy it as well um, and as much as we do. Yeah, I hope so. It's interesting that you recorded the album in two studios. Jo George Studios in Bourbon, right? And uh, famous Rick Rubin's uh, Shangri-La studio. Yeah, um, most of it was recorded at our studio in Burbank. Um, we we went to, to Shangri-La as a way to kind of get out of the space that we recorded in and, and go do some extra stuff and do some mixing. Um, we stayed there for a little bit and we got some cool things done. We did some vocals, we did some string arrangements um, there, but we ended up going back to our studio mm -hmm. to finish it up, um, kind of where it all started, because we just felt really comfortable in there and, and we understand that room, the way it sounds. And, and so for the mixing process, it was really important to, to kind of know the room exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and not nothing against Shangri-La, it's a beautiful place, but it wasn't for us making the rest of the ah, record. Okay, okay, I understand. You announced the album uh, with a great advertisement in London where you put up a poster that uh, read uh, Long Live the Queens. Uh, whose idea was that? How did people react about that? 
Um, I think it was good timing too with the, uh, you know, <laughs> what's going on in England and probably with the, the coronation and all that. Um, I'm not deeply educated in uh, the uh, royal family's world, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was a nice play on it. Mm -hmm. And um, we always just like to do kind of some subliminal things um, with our with our press and our marketing uh, when a new record comes out. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who came up with that, honestly. Uh, maybe it was Josh. I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of ideas flying around all the time, but man, is it a cool? I mean, I love that poster. I think it's a, it's a yeah, it's a really uh, it's it's great poster. Yeah, uh, this summer you will be performing a lot of, all over the world. Uh, what can you promise us? Uh, there is also mentioned that uh, possible performance at Glastonbury Festival, right? Can you? Is it true or not? Uh, I'm not gonna comment too much on any surprises mm -mm. uh but i can tell you that uh we got a lot of songs to play you know we got a lot of songs to choose from on our set list mm -hmm. um and so i think a lot of our fans go to a lot of our shows like night after night and mm -hmm. so i can promise that, that it will never be the same and um we're gonna play songs that maybe we've never played before live and uh we always like to play songs off our new record and uh we can't wait to be back on the road um and uh can't wait to see our fans unfortunately we will not see you in croatia for now you played uh, with us here in croatia three times uh, the last time you were at in music yeah. festival six years ago as you remember what do you remember yeah. about the performance in uh, croatia and croatian people croatian audience i i loved that show i remember it very well and i remember seeing david byrne uh play right before us on our stage which mm -hmm. is one of the best shows i've ever seen and yeah. so i must say I, was, I agree i certainly agree about that yeah yeah and it was before he made the film mm -hmm. um based on that show and i remember just being blown away watching from the side of the stage and it's weird because on the side of the stage because all those performers were moving around so the sound's not the same anytime they were moving the sound was moving as well mm -hmm. i just thought it was amazing it was really inspiring and probably inspired uh, us that night yeah, and what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you mention Croatia? Perhaps you were with us at, um, as a tourist, or do you intend to come here as a tourist? I love it there. Um, for some reason, I always just think of like, I think of it being sunny, honestly, maybe because we're there in the summer, mm -hmm. but I always think of it as being beautiful and the, and the fans being so amazing. And um, I know, I promise that we'll be there, you know, this year, next year. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting fact that in your career that you are one of the authors of the music for uh, GTA V, uh, my personal favorite video game. What was <laughs> it like doing the music for that game? <laughs> How is it different from the Queens of the Stone Age? Yeah, I don't even play video games, so I don't, I don't, I don't know too much about it. But it was a cool experience. It's, uh, it's, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't. Uh, I guess it wasn't my, you know, my job to do the, all the music, but I was brought in to help. And it's really, it's an interesting thing because you just kind of play to the images mm -hmm. and, and uh, things are cool like that. Cause you don't have to, it's not about you. It's about the, it's like making music for a film. It's mm -hmm. about the picture. It's about the story. It's about all that. So you kind of do things that have nothing to do with yourself and you don't have to really like worry about, um, you know, it reflecting you as an artist. You do it just for the for the game, I guess. And uh, it was a cool experience. Yeah, it's really cool. And you didn't play GTA Five. I've never played it. You never played it. Yeah. I saw it. I saw it while we we're doing the the music, but I never played ah, it. Okay. Last year you also presented your solo project, GLU. Can you tell me about that and uh, uh, how does that project differ from the music in the Queens of the Stone Age? How did it come about? Um. Yeah, uh, glue was just uh, something I wanted to do, something I could have full control of, not creatively, but but time wise. Um, something when we weren't doing Queens, I could record, uh, tour whenever I wanted, and um, I never really thought I'd do something solo. Mm -hmm. But um, I also wanted a different challenge. You know, I love you know Queens is my band, and and I love it's my priority, but that's rock music and I wanted to do something else that challenged me and so to make a hip-hop record and uh, to kind of dive into that mm -hmm. was uh, was a challenge never done it before and mm -hmm. that's what excites me is to do something different and um, I'll continue to do that um, while I'm doing Queens as well
Yeah, I really like that. Thank you. Uh, do young people today still listen to rock music to a large extent? What do you think about that? Does rock music have to be afraid of some newer musical trends like uh, such a trap music? You know, I think being from America, rock music is not at the forefront, right? Mm -hmm. um, hip hop and pop, country music is 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 what's big and what's if you look at the headliners at all our festivals, yeah, not rock bands, and it's 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 strange. Um, but if you go around the world, people still do listen to rock music, so I think that's what's encouraging is that just because it doesn't really exist as much in america you go to england you go to australia you go to europe there are still big rock bands headlining festivals and i think um that's something to hold on to and i don't think it's going to go away and i think that even if it you know there are trends and there are ups and downs and i think that even if it kind of slips away for a second rock and music will never go away you know eventually people are going to want that and want a real band playing the real instruments on stage um there's something exciting about that that can never go away yeah, I hope that so. Uh, so for the last question, will you get to rest this summer? <laughs> what does your ideal vacation look like? <laughs> I don't go on vacation. Really? Uh, <laughs> like to. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we we tour and I, 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 I've been touring my whole life. So vacation to me is coming home, honestly, mm -hmm. um, and not traveling because like to be traveling your whole life for work and then to have to get on another plane, another train, another bus, you know, it's just like Sometimes I just want to come home and, and uh, sit with my dog and uh, see my friends and family at home. And uh, can't ask for a better place than Los Angeles. Yeah, for sure. Mike, thank you very much for this interview. I hope to see you really soon here in Croatia. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Bye. And bye, Rachel. Bye -bye.